From 2D image to 3D model, I'm going to show you how to turn this dragon logo into a 3D final object, texture it, set awesome lighting, and render your scene. Ready? Let's make it stand out. So here we are in Blender, so the first step to do is gonna be to delete all these objects, so I'd like to press A, X, and let's delete everything. After that, I'd like to drag and drop our dragon logo, so we can simply drag it and drop it in the 3D viewport. After that, I'd like to reset the location and the rotation. So we can press N, and we can go to item here, and I'd like to select. So you can left click and drag down, so I'd like to reset all the locations to zero. You can type zero and let's press enter. So now as you can see, our logo is at, at the center. So we can do the same thing for the rotation, so let's select them all, and we can press zero, press enter. So now it's completely flat on the floor. So we can press seven to go to the top, and next I'd like to convert it into a G pencil. So let me show you the way. So with it selected, we can press right click on the mouse and we can choose this trace image to grease pencil. So here for this resolution, I'd like to reduce it a little bit down to something round three. It's gonna be enough. So let's click on OK. So now on this outliner, we're gonna have both the empty and this G pencil. So right now we don't need the empty anymore. So I'm gonna just select it here and we can press X and let's delete it. So to hide this panel, you can press N to hide it. And the next step, it's gonna be to select this G pencil map, and I'd like to switch to the edit mode. After that, I want you to press L on this corner here so that we can select the edge corner, and we can press X and let's delete these points. Perfect, so now we are left with only the center with our logo. So the next step is gonna be to clean up the geometry so you can see that we have some stuff, that's some residue that we have to remove. So the best way to remove it is to select the essential elements because we have in too much of these elements here. So I'm going to select only what is necessary. So we can press L and let's grab them all like this. Keep selecting only the essentials. Okay, we've got the head, eye, and all these elements like this. So to check if you are selecting everything, you can press G to wobble a little bit the logo. And as you can see, we're selecting everything. So next I'd like to press Control I so we're gonna be reversing to the selection. So as you can see, we're selecting all those parts that we don't want. We can just press X and let's delete all these points. So now the next step is gonna to be to convert this G pencil into curve map. So let me just go back here to the object mode. So with it selected, we can go to object, convert, and let's convert it into a path. So now we do have two objects. We have the G pencil and the trace. I'd like to just delete this G pencil because we don't need it anymore can press X and let's delete it. So now we are left with this trace. So I'd like to optimize it a little bit. So we can go to this object data properties. Let me just expand it a little bit. So for the resolution, I'd like to keep reducing it down. And I want you to keep an eye on your mesh. So let's just reduce it down. I think something around five is gonna be enough. So basically this resolution is the number of points that you got here. So the more that you increase that, you can see the change here. So I think something around five is gonna be enough. So the next step is gonna be to convert our trace into an actual mesh. So to do that, we can go here to object and let's go all down to convert and we can convert it into a mesh. All right, so now it's a mesh. We can press tab to switch to the edit mode. We can select all these points. We can do some, apply some optimization. So with it selected, we can go to edge and we can click on unsubdivide. So as you can see, we cut down the number of vertices to something manageable. So next what we need to do, you need to press F so that we can fill these spaces. But you're gonna see that we have this problem, so we're only filling this part. So I'm gonna press Ctrl Z to revert back, and what we need to do is to optimize our mesh. So basically the problem with it is that we have some duplicates. So we have to remove duplicates. So I'm gonna press A to select everything, and we can press M, and I want you to merge by distance. So as you can see, 21 vertices are removed. So now if we press F, we're gonna be perfectly filling these faces. But for the eye, we have to work on it a little bit. We have to cut this space. So to cut it through, I'll actually use the Boolean. So let me just select this object here. We can press L to select it. We can press G, Z to move it down. And I'd like to extrude it up. So we can press E and extrude it up like this. So now it's going through this mesh. Next, I'd like to press L to select the entire object. You can press P to separate selection. After that, we can switch back to the object mode. And I want you to select only this object here. 
our logo you can go to the modifiers and I want you to search for the boolean modifier so you can click on search search for the boolean so I'm going to keep these settings as default so for the object here we can use this eyedropper you can click and select this object so you can see that we we have this cut here so next what I'd like to do is to apply this boolean so you can click here and apply the boolean modifier so now let's select this object and we can just press x and delete it and as you can see we got the eye cut here so the next step is going to be to give our mesh some depth so to do that we can select it and let's go to the modifier properties again we can add a modifier it's going to be the solidify so let's search for solidify the first one so i'm going to increase the thickness for example to 0 0.25 so this is the right thickness but you're going to notice that we got a problem here so some parts are going the other side the other direction so to fix this problem, you can select your object, press edit, press tab to go to the edit mode. You can select these parts that are facing the wrong side, the wrong direction. And so after selecting them, we can press shift N to flip the normals. So here you can click and check this inside. So you're going you're gonna to invert them. So we're missing one here. I'm going to press Alt A to make sure that everything is deselected. Let's select this part, repeat the same thing, Shift N, and we can check this inside. Perfect. So the next step is going to be to add the bevel. I'd like to bevel these edges here so they are completely sharp. So let's add a new modifier. It's going to be, let's search for bevel. Bevel modifier, we can select it. So I'm going to press Ctrl and middle mouse to zoom in. So you can see that it's beveled right now, just a little bit. So let me select my mesh, right click and shade auto smooth. So now it's perfectly smooth. So we got our 2D dragon image converted into a 3D mesh. So the next step is going to be to work on the materials. So here on the bottom, I'd like to expand this window a little bit up. And I'd like to switch it from the timeline to this shader editor. So here we can press Z and let's switch to the material preview so that we can see the material that we got. So with this one selected, with our object selected, we can click on new so that we can add a new material and let's call it logo, dragon, dragon logo. All right, I'm gonna scroll a little bit up to zoom in here and let's see what we got. So we got these two nodes, got the principal PSDF connected to this material output. So I'd like to press N to hide that panel. And first I'd like to increase this metallic all the way to one so that we can have a metallic object. So next for the roughness, I'd like to reduce it down to something around 0 0.15. So now it's glossy. So it's a perfect combination between the metallic and the roughness. So the next step is going to be to add some variation in our material. So I'd like to add the gradient effect. So let's press Shift A and like to search for gradient texture, the first node. And I'd like to connect the color to the base color. So to control this node, we're going to need two additional nodes. So shift A, let's add the texture coordinate. Let's put it here. We can just expand this a little bit up. And next we need to add the mapping. So shift A, let's search for mapping node. Let's put it right here next to it. So I'd like to connect the object to the vector. And here for the mapping, we can connect the vector to the vector. All right, so this is the effect that we got, the gradient at the middle. I don't want that. Instead, I'd like to switch it from linear to this quadrical sphere. All right, so we got that. So to control this effect, I'd like to go to the scale of the mapping node. So let me just scroll a little bit up and we can reduce this value down. So for example, let's set it to 0 0.5. Same thing for the Y, let's reduce it down to 0 0.5. Perfect, we can press 7 to see that effect. So to make the animation, I'd like to add the background image. So you can press Shift A and let's search for Mesh Plane. I'd like to scale it a little bit up. So also for the scaling, I'd like to press N. Let's go to Item. So to keep the scale of our plane aligned with our camera, I'd like to set it to the following. So 1920, it's gonna be just 1.920. And for the Y, you can set it, for example, to just 1.080. So this is the right resolution. So all we have to do right now is to scale it up. So we're gonna remain, or we're gonna keep that same. So we're gonna keep those same proportions. Perfect. So I'm gonna just move it down. So let's go to the move tool. We can move it below our logo. Okay, we can scale it even up. Something like that seems reasonable. 
So next I'd like to add a new material to this background. So let's call it, so let's call this material background. All right, here we can select, we can press A and period so that we can reset the zoom here. And let me just focus on this principal PSDF. So first what I'd like to do, actually we can bring that same material that we created for this logo. So we can click on this icon and let's bring this logo dragon. So to duplicate it, we can click on this icon right here and let's call it, let's add here the background. All right, so we can tweak it right now. It's gonna be different from the, the other logo here. So let me just press seven to go to the top. So first I'd like to do, I'd like to reduce or to increase the roughness all the way to one. And also I'd like to give it some different colors. So we can press shift A and let's search for color ramp. And I'd like to put it between the gradient texture and the principal PSTF right here. So next we can select, for example, this white color and let's give it some bluish. Let's make it blue, something like this. Can make it a little bit dark. Okay, we can also try to bring this one a little bit to the right side so that we can have those nice dark corners. So to render our scene, we need to add a camera. So let me just bring this panel down and we can press Shift A and let's go down to camera. So now we need the camera to be looking at our Dragon logo. So to do that, I'd like to press 7 to go to the top. We can press Control, Alt and 0 so that we can lock the camera to this view right here. We can select the camera and we can press G to move it a little bit to the center. We can press GZ and let's take it up. Let's move it up like this. Okay, a little bit down. GZ. I think that's perfect. All right, so now we can press Z and switch to the render it so that we can see what we got. So this is the kind of lighting that we got. It's really bad, so we have to work a little bit on the lighting. So first I'd like to switch from the object to the word here in the shader editor. And here we have the background image. I would like to press Shift A and let's search for sky texture. So let's search for sky texture, the first node, and we can connect the color to the color here. So now we can have some sky lighting in our scene. Next, I'd like to add some lamps so we can press shift and right click so that we can put the cursor right here and let's do shift A and we can search for light point. Okay, we can take it a little bit up like that. Let's press seven to go to the top. And here for the properties, we can increase the power to 1000 watts. There we go. We got that nice effect here, the shadow effect. So we can press alt D to duplicate our light and we can move it up like this. So basically the difference between the Alt D and the Shift D when duplicating, let me show you the difference. So if I do here, if I change this power, so for example, if I reduce it down to just 10 watts, so it's gonna be changing on both lamps. So that's really useful if you have multiple duplicates. So let me just bring it back to 1000. So for the color, we can make it a little bit bluish. Something like this, it's gonna be fine. Next, to make our logo look really nice, I'd like to add a new layer of light. So let's select our logo, we can press Shift D to duplicate it. Let me just move it up, we can press S, Z, and let's get real down, like this. And we can drag it down here. We can also take the background, drag it a little bit down. After that, I'd like to select that object, and we can go back here from the word to the object, and I'm gonna just delete that material. Also here in the material properties, we can just delete this dragon, logo dragon. We can just remove it from here and add the new material. It's gonna be the emission. We can just call it emission. And here in the principal PSDF, I'm gonna just delete this node. You can select it, you can press X to delete it and we can press Shift A and let's search for emission. This shader node. So I'm gonna just connect emission to the surface and for the strength, I'd like to increase it up to 100. That's nice. So control space to maximize our window. And check this out. We're going to have that nice, brilliant effect here. You can press zero to face our logo. So now we can go ahead and give our scene a render. But before we can do that, I'd like to optimize it a little bit. So control space, let's go back into our settings. And I'd like to go to the render properties. So first I'd like to check this ambient occlusion so that we can have that, these ambient light in here. So I'd like to increase this distance. So for example, one meter, that's nice. After that, I'd like to check the bloom. 
and I like to reduce its effect a little bit down so the intensity let's set it to just 0.02 and to have some surface reflection we can check this screen space reflections we can check that so now we got some nice reflections going on here all right so let's press zero to go back to the camera view and can go ahead and give our scene a render so let's go to render and let's render an image and there you have it we rendered our logo so we can add for example some light here let me show you i'm gonna select this light shift d to duplicate it because we need to change it i'm gonna put it inside the eye and i'd like to change its color you can go to the color here color and let's make it completely red you can also increase the power to 2000 press enter that's nice all right so with that being done let's go ahead and give our scene a new render and there you have it we transformed the 2d image into a stunning 3d model in blender so if you find this tutorial helpful i appreciate a like and a subscribe and also consider checking my website realityfigures.net for more amazing content